grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day. My friends, as we gather here in this place, we come to give thanks and celebrate the life of our brother Ian Alexander Gilmer. We come to share with Jean and the family in giving thanks for Ian's life, to remember the uniqueness of his journey amongst us and the fact that we've been privileged to share in his story and that he has been part of ours. We gather here to share with Jean, to offer her our support, our love today, as well as with the family, with Douglas and Kirsty, Lucy and Benji, Ben and Taylor, great-grandson Harvey and his sister Mary and all other members of the close family. We come to offer them our prayerful support and love today, tomorrow and in all the days that lie ahead. And we gather here with them to bring our memories of Ian, the times that we've shared, the moments that we're thinking of just now as we remember him in the fullness of life. And so we gather in the sadness of loss and in the suddenness of Ian's passing. But we gather too in the gift of love that declares that death is not an end but a new beginning through that gift of life and faith promised through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And so we gather now together to be the people of God, to share in our loss, to share our grief, but also to give thanks in love and in grace. So let us come before God in our worship and in our praise. Our first hymn is from CH4. It's You Are Before Me, Lord, You Are Behind, to the tune of Highland Cathedral. I would ask if you are able to be upstanding as we sing, but only if you are able. Please feel free to remain seated.
The psalmist writes, One thing I ask of the Lord is the one thing that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Let us take a moment to come before God in prayer. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, you are the Lord of life and the conqueror of death. You are help in every time of trouble and in the presence of death you offer comfort to those who mourn. Lord, we bow before you today believing that you bear our grief and share our sense of loss. Give us grace to worship you and to trust in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, Lord, that because Christ lives, we shall live also. And as we gather here in this place, may we know your presence in our hearts. Loving God, as we come to mourn Ian's passing, we come to to celebrate his life, his legacy, his gifts. We come to thank you for all the precious memories that Ian has left in our hearts today, the times that we reflect upon and remember together the moments that for us define him as a person in the journey of our lives. We come in the sadness of loss, but we come to give thanks for life in all its intricacies and wonders, in all its difficulties and trials. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we've had to share in Ian's journey. Be with us now as each one of us brings our own memories of him to this place. The moments of his life that will always be part of our lives. Loving God in our pain, we remember with sorrow how we have failed one another and brought grief to your heart. In your kindness, forgive our past sins. Set us free from guilt. Make us strong to live our lives in love. God of grace and power, send your Holy Spirit among us that we may hear your promises and know them to be true and so receive the comfort and peace they bring through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As many of you will know, as we gather to celebrate someone's life, I'm always drawn to these words in Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, words written by a philosopher thousands of years ago, and yet words that still carry such strong influence to us today. We hear these words from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and as we think about them, we think about the different times of Ian's life. If you can imagine someone putting together a tapestry, they start with a blank canvas, and each thread is interwoven one with another to create the whole picture. And yet each thread is important. Each thread is unique. We are the threads and the strands of Ian's life. We are the threads that make up that tapestry of his journey. And as we hear these words, we think of the times that we've shared, the times that are ours, and the times of Ian's life. In chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes, the philosopher writes, For everything its season, and for every activity under heaven its time, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to abstain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to discard. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time for silence and a time for speech. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything to suit its time. So we gather to celebrate the times of Ian's life today. And we remember his journey, particularly through the reality 
of the love that we knew and shared in his life and the love by which he lived his life. And so we hear these words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians at chapter 13 as Paul talks about love. If I speak in the language of tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now, and now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. These words could be written for Ian. Love is patient, it's kind, it's not, it does not envy, it is not, doesn't boast, it's not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. That's how he lived his life. That's how he shared his journey with those round about him in patient love and in grace and in humility. And in the reality of life, he was blessed with so much. And as we think of the reality of his passing today, we think also of all that he's brought into our lives. And we pray for that sense of peace. And we hear these words of Jesus in John's Gospel. Jesus said, set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwelling places in my father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you. For I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and take you to myself. So that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way I'm taking. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, said Jesus. No one comes to father except by me. Peace is my parting gift to you. My own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled hearts at rest and banish all your fears. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word. We are the journey and story of our lives. Each one unique and yet each interacting one with another to make that life complete. When we come together in a service like this, we come to remember that journey that a person has shared with us. And so to do, we come to remember and give thanks for Ian's story, Ian's journey that we have shared in. As a minister, I'm in a privileged position. I get to tell people stories. And it's what makes us the unique, wonderful people we are. And so as we share today, 
we hear this Ian's journey today as we remember the part that we've played in it. Ian Alexander Gilmer was born on the 3rd of November in 1939 across the water in Dunoon. I was thinking as we were coming, driving back from Largs this morning, that wonderful view of Dunoon as it was bathed in sunshine this morning, a relatively rare occurrence. It turned out he was the youngest of three children, his father John and his mum, Je- mother Jessie, and he was raised in Dunoon, attending Dunoon Grammar. After leaving school, he went to do a four-year apprenticeship as a painter and decorator. And then after completing his, his apprenticeship, he worked for a few firms in Dunoon, including McKinnon's. Now, his father, John, worked across the water in the Admiralty, which really involved quite a lot of travelling day by day. So it was decided that the family would move to Guruk, and in 1960 they did, although they picked the best day for it. They moved the same day that the American Navy arrived at Dunoon. The two things are not connected. Over here, he then worked for other firms, including McGarrity's and Freddie Ball, before moving on to work for the Ministry of Defence at the Great Harbour. And it was there he worked until his retirement in 1994 at 55. He looked forward, he enjoyed his work with the MOD because there were some nice benefits to it, particularly the job that he would get sent to every year across to the Isle of Arran. And you may well wonder, why was someone from the MOD sent to Arran every year? Well, they were sent to paint the measured mileposts. One wonders if they have been painted since Ian retired. Perhaps not. But that's what he enjoyed doing, because that also allowed for an extra holiday. He was always driven by a strong work ethic. He always liked to be busy. And not only that, but that work ethic meant that a job had to be done the right way, the proper way. And he would look back at jobs that he had done and say that it was always Clyde built, because that's where he had learned his trade. Dunoon was to have such an important part in Ian's life, because Ian met Jean, who was also from Dunoon, the same day, the day that the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh visited Dunoon in 1958. They met in the crowd and spent some time together. And Ian, being the gallant soul he was, offered to walk Jean home. He didn't know she stayed just across the road. (laughs) But it was the gesture that was important. And so from that time, romance blossomed. And then, of course, there was a bit of a stumbling block as suddenly Ian was no longer living in Dunoon, but across the water in Guruk. But the romance continued with frequent ferry crossings to and fro. And so from that time they were married in Dunoon in 1962. And last October were privileged to share their diamond wedding anniversary with family and friends. They shared the start of their married life in a basement flat, or as we now like to call them, garden flats in Finnett Street, Finnett Street, before then moving to a flat in Nelson Street in Greenock as well. There were new houses being built in Garvey Avenue, and so that's where Ian and Jean decided to set up home. However, things didn't exactly go to plan as the builder who was building the houses went into liquidation just before they were complete. However, Ian took advice and took ownership because ownership is nine-tenths of the law. When you're in, you're in. And so from the the last 50 years, they have have lived up in Garvey Avenue enjoying the reality of their home and the views that it gave them. Jean and Ian were then blessed with the son Douglas And that reality of the family complete, but not really, because Douglas went on to bring Kirsty into the family. And from that came the reality of the grandchildren, Lucy and Ben, and of course, their partners now, Benji 
and just so recently Taylor and the wonder of life shown in the great, their great grandson Harvey who they just recently had the privilege of meeting during their last visit to Australia this summer when they shared in Ben and Taylor's wedding a really wonderful time and of course he always had his sister Mary as well here but the family was important to him everything he did was for his family it was centre to all his he and Jean's lives in his younger days Ian was in the scouts for a very short time before moving across to the boys brigade and he shared at his time in the boys brigade he loved nothing better than to being with friends and indeed for a time he owned the pride of his life which is a Lambretta scooter that Lambretta did many miles up and down the highways and byways of Great Britain not only in Scotland and further afield but even across to Ireland it is embedded in Jean's memory the trip to Ireland going across the ferry to Larne driving down to Dublin and back up to Belfast and also the trip back especially because of the rain now being in a Lambretta in the rain is not much fun particularly when you're getting soaked they stopped off at a cafe and a kindly cafe owner provided them with poly bags to try and keep their feet dry or at least their legs I'm not sure it worked I'm pretty sure they were still soaked by the time they got home but he loved his scooter however it eventually got sold to help buy furniture for the flat Ian always loved his music music was important to him he played the drums uh, uh, himself and loved nothing better than to hear a good drum solo who doesn't I do he liked to go out for walks and when he was on his own, when he was walking around, he had his own playlist in his head that he would come along to. His tunes that he had that were so much a part of him and that he loved. His own internal playlist, if you like. Also in his younger days, he loved the cinema. He was a big Western fan. Gene thinks he probably saw every Western that had been made up to a certain point. He really enjoyed them. But also... There was also the other times where he just liked being with family. And in latter times, he decided to progress doing his family tree. And he could also lose himself quite easily in a jigsaw. His other passions, of course, were gardening and his DIY. He could turn his hand to anything, to putting decking down, to building a wall or even a garage. But you knew it would be done properly. It would be done the right way. He always just liked to be busy and he had also just recently just stripped the spare bedroom to be done up when he came back from Australia. He never got to complete it but Douglas and Lucy finished the job for him. I'm sure he would be proud of the standard of their workmanship. Ian and Jean loved nothing better than the holidays and though they shared in the, the reality of their life they made sure there was always a two-week break for the family during the summer that time away was important and so there was trips all over the united kingdom and then subsequently to europe sometimes including a trip to the mallorca to his cousin's villa there then there was trips to further afield in later life to the usa including a trip to hawaii that brought him to the pearl harbor memorial a really moving place as well as to Canada and Mexico. And then, of course, there were trips to visit Douglas and Kirsty in Australia. Ian loved it. He loved these constant comings and goings and the trips. And, of course, the last trip to Ben's wedding was so important to him and that joy of seeing his great-grandson, Harvey. Here, back home, he liked to keep himself involved with friends and neighbours alike. But he also volunteered as a reader for the talking newspaper. First of all, just as a reader, and then subsequently doing some of the recordings and putting the technical side to use of creating the tape for people to listen to. He supported the talking newspaper for many years. But in everything he did, the family was central. 
He was there to support the family in any decisions they made. For Douglas remembers only too well that father who was always there to encourage him to be the best he could be, to take the risks, to take the chances and the opportunities that life brought, even if that sometimes was at a cost to Ian and to Jean. But they wanted them to do the best they could, and Douglas appreciates that so much. And that encouragement was passed on to Lucy and to Ben to be the best they could, to share in the journey of their lives and to be the best of themselves that they could be. Ian was easygoing. Nothing seemed to rile him or fluster him or get him upset. He wasn't one to lose his temper. He was a quiet man, but thrived in company, especially as a member of a group called the Young Explorers. Now, this was a group that he was part of with 12 friends and also they enjoyed socializing, even going on short breaks and holidays at times. But then there was also the Friday nights down at the Wherry, the Wherry Tavern with his four friends, enjoying these times were important to him. Don't think that Ian was easy or a pushover. He was not. He could be stubborn at times. When he decided something had to be done, it had to be done. And he wouldn't be pushed into things he didn't want to do. But he was always happy and upbeat. He was always full of fun, taking things in his stride. He enjoyed life the way he wanted to enjoy it. He lived life on his own terms. He was happy strolling around a new place, experiencing new experiences or new new, um new uh, traditions he had his own opinion on things but he always respected others as well ian had suffered a tia in 2018 but was always very fit apart from that and recovered well from it he had smoked as his generation did from the age of 11 until just four years ago when he had a chest infection and was diagnosed pneumonia and he stopped like that. That was his choice. That's the way he did things. Ian took ill on the 21st of December and died on the 30th of December at the Royal Alexandra Hospital in Paisley. I know Jean and Douglas and, Kirst and uh, Lucy and all the family would like to say a huge thank you to the staff up in the RH for their kindness and their love in these difficult times, but also to all of you their friends and neighbours, for such wonderful kindness shown in these difficult times. In 60 years of married life, and in all the years that they went out together, Ian and Jean could always make each other laugh. They never lost that gift. That is a wonderful gift to have. And at the end of the day, as we gather and think of Ian's life, the one word that comes through to me so strongly is contentment. Ian was content in his life. Content in all that he was and all that he'd achieved. He was, he was filled with a sense of joy of content, that contentment brings. We thank God for that contentment today. We thank God for the man that we knew and that we know and loved. We thank God that we've been privileged to be part of his journey and his story. I went looking for words to do with contentment today and for today, and I came across a poem by a modern Scottish poet called Stuart Patterson, and I thought I'd share them today with you. He writes this, I've made my own museum of happiness, which isn't built of brick or stone or wood. Its walls, the thickness of the day, a flapping tongue of canvas, held in place by rope and peg to stop it flying off and joyously away up into everywhere in time and space. I'll carry it around with me to pitch beside the sea in a field or by that river, a billowing rickety marquee, a travelling show of personal delights, performing one night only and forever. What sights, what wonders, see those things unseen, 
except in meanwhile's vivid dreams, smile, laugh, and gasp, and live a lifetime somewhere in between the daily grind of minutes into hours, be amazed by happiness's alchemy, transmogrifying days of certainty to joyous, rapturous aeons of impossibility. Step right up, pay nothing, be called in to watch the carnival of you begin. The show to beat all shows where nothing's out of bounds and every good thing goes around and comes around again. Not down or out, and you're the hottest act in town, the permanently top display, the troupe of you booked, solid every single smiling day. Every single smiling day. That's how Ian lived his life, making his own museum of happiness. That museum of happiness that we were privileged to be allowed into and be part of and share in. That museum of happiness that he shared in the living of his life. And so we come in the sadness of loss. So we come in the grief that loss brings to remind ourselves that in grief we pay the price of love and to commend Ian to God's rest and peace. And so we come to give thanks for all he has brought into our lives and to remember before God the family who were the centre of his. We give thanks for Jean today, for that meeting in Dunoon. I was going to say a chance meeting, but Dunoon doesn't seem that big a place. But that chance meeting in the crowd that brought them together and sustained them through their time of courting through 60 years of married life in all the ups and downs but never losing sight of what's important to be able to laugh and enjoy the moment for every moment is precious and we bring before god the family who he loved and doted upon but also who he encouraged to be the best he could and to live the life they wanted we remember douglas today and kirsty in Australia at this time, but thinking of us at this time, we offer them to God and ask God's peace, peace and blessing to be in their heart. We remember Lucy and here with us today and Benji, her husband across in Singapore at this time again, thinking about us and being with us at this moment. And of course, Ben and Taylor in Australia and young Harvey, who will continue to live and grow with these stories of Ian as part of his journey, as part of his legacy. We remember his sister Mary, and she remembers her times of love and life shared. We bring them before God. We name them and ask God's blessing upon them. Let us take a moment to come before God. Let us like, unite our hearts. Let us pray. God of all grace, God of all love, God of all peace, we thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to break the power of death and to bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. We thank you that Christ shared our life, took upon himself our death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all people. Lord, look not on us, but on us as found in Christ Jesus our Lord, and bring us safely through the judgment to the joy and peace of your eternal presence. Holy and loving God, you hold all souls in life, and we praise you for those who have shared this earthly life with us and have entered into eternal life with you now. Here today we come to thank you for the life of our brother, Ian Alexander Gilmer. We thank you for all that made Ian special to each one of us, for all that you gave Ian and accomplished in Ian's life for all that he meant to those who knew him and loved him. We come to remember him, Lord, as that quiet man, a family man, but above all, as a contented man. We thank you for his joy and his humour, his ability to wind people up when he, thought it was for, when he thought he could, that sense of joy that he brought into our lives. 
We come to thank you for the man that we knew and loved, for the skill of his hands, his creativity. We thank you for that man who enjoyed that internal playlist of music, a song for every occasion. We thank you for his love and grace and joy today. We come to thank you for his patience. We come to thank you for his sense of acceptance of others. We thank you, Lord, for all that he has meant to us. We thank you for his hard work and endeavor, his strong work ethic, his sense of doing and taking a pride and a job well done. We thank you for all these things. And we remember him especially within the heart and life of his family. We thank you, Lord, that for Ian, all pain and suffering are ended, that death itself is conquered. Help us to release Ian into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment with you in the joy of your everlasting kingdom. We take a moment, Lord, to remember Ian now. In the silence of this place, we bring our moments, our times of his life. And together we celebrate the whole journey that he has shared with us. And together we commend him to your rest and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you, O Lord, for those who were there for Ian in the difficult last few days. And we commend to you the staff at the Royal Alexandra Hospital in Paisley. And we remember them and all the work that they do in our name. And we commend them to you in grace. Father, before you now, we name Ian's family. We ask your peace, love, and grace to be in their hearts today, tomorrow, and in all that lies ahead, that in the reality of the pain of grief, they may know that gift of love. We pray today for Jean. We thank you for that love that they shared in the journey of their life. We thank you for all you blessed them with in that journey. We remember today Douglas and Kirsty and ask your blessing upon them. We pray today for Lucy and Benji, Ben and Taylor. Be their constant sense of comfort and peace. We remember and give thanks for Harvey today, who will continue to live and grow with Ian's legacy as part of his journey. We remember Mary, his sister, before you, and bring her and all other members of the close family to you now. Grant that they may cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all comfort, in the midst of our pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star and awaken us the spirit of mercy that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them that the comfort we receive from you and bring us at the last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory, where death itself is ended and where every tear is wiped from every eye. In your name, O God. Amen. They say a picture says a, th says a thousand words. Let me take a few seconds now to share in some pictures of Ian's journey.
pictures of a life lived and shared, and there are always so many more we could have included, but to receive and give thanks for that life well lived and that life of contentment. On behalf of Jean and the family, can I thank you most sincerely for your presence here this morning and sharing with them in thanksgiving for Ian's life, knowing that so many of you have been here and shared with them, will indeed be a comfort and strength in all that lies ahead because you ladies and gentlemen have given them the greatest thing of all, the gift of your time, the most important and precious thing we have. On the family's behalf, I extend to you a sincere thanks. Also to invite you following the conclusion of the service to come through to the hall through the back here and to join Jean and the family in a time together. And when you do come back, the most important words become, do you remember when, as you share your stories and your moments of Ian's life? So on Jean's behalf, please do come through and join the family after the service. Also, as you leave this morning, there will be a retiring offering and anything received will be sent in Ian's name to the British Heart and Stroke Association. So please do support that as you leave. There will also be opportunity in the hall as well. We're going to close by singing the great hymn of the Boys' Brigade. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life?
can smile because he's lived. You can close your eyes and pray he'll come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all that he's left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him. Or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he's gone. Or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind. Be empty and turn your back. Or you could do what he, or you could do what he would want. Smile. Open your eyes. Love. And go on. Go on now in the peace, comfort, and strength of the living God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon and dwell within your heart this day. Remain with you and be with you. And all whom you love and share your journey, your story with, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen.